Preludes is one of T.S. Eliot's earliest poems, written from 1909 to 1911, while he was still a uni student. The whole poem is a quadriptic, which means it's divided into four parts, or, in this case, preludes. T.S. Eliot wrote Preludes 1 and 2 while he was studying at Harvard University, Prelude 3 while he was in Paris studying at Sorbonne University, and Prelude 4 upon his return to the United States. Preludes reflects T.S. Eliot's distaste towards the urban decay, alienation and moral corruption brought on by modern life. The early 1900s saw the rise of the metropolis, or megacity, as a result of the Industrial Revolution. Cities like Paris, London and New York all bustled with people and industry. They were dazzling examples of modern man's achievement. But they also had seedy underbellies where people felt lonely, trapped and exhausted. As a modernist poet, T.S. Eliot often criticised the nature of modernity in his poetry. Modernity is not a particular time period, it's the culture of relentless industrial and technological advancement. This culture, or way of life, tends to make people greedy, selfish and wasteful. Even as a young man, T.S. Eliot saw life in the modern world as unnatural and spiritually draining. City life in particular is portrayed in preludes as dirty, dismal and lonely. Thinking back to our introductory lesson on T.S. Eliot's poetry, we know that modernism was a literary movement that extended throughout the first half of the 20th century. Works produced during this time were characterised by a pessimistic outlook on society and the human condition. This may sound depressing, as many of us enjoy the conveniences of modern life, but T.S. Eliot creates such a vivid impression of life in this new world that we can't help but be drawn into the scenes. His poetry helps us reflect on how our busy, urban lives have caused us to lose faith, identity and a true sense of purpose. He even hints at how we might redeem ourselves. Stay tuned for this. Let's begin by discussing the form of preludes. Form refers to the type of poetry T.S. Eliot has used and how he has set out its structure. T.S. Eliot liked to make each of his poems unique, so he deliberately used different forms. He also didn't stick to particular rhyme schemes or metrical patterns or rhythms. He only used poetic forms that served his purpose. As we've already mentioned, T.S. Eliot's usual purpose or message was to criticise modern society. Although it seems negative, he expresses his message in the most beautiful and heartbreaking way. You don't win the Nobel Prize for Literature for nothing. As mentioned earlier, Preludes takes the form of a quadriptic. Each of its four parts is a separate prelude that depicts a different time of day in a nameless city, evening, morning, night and afternoon. Hey. Isn't that a bit out of order? Well spotted, team. T.S. Eliot manipulated the chronology or timeline in Preludes to reinforce the idea that our sense of time has become artificial. We obsess over clocks and have become disconnected from the natural cycles and rhythms of the earth. Already, we can see how T.S. Eliot has used poetic form to reinforce his big ideas. But he doesn't stop there. T.S. Eliot also liked to organise his poems in a similar way to a piece of music. He was known for using music as an analogy for poetry. An analogy is when a composer compares something to a related example. Let's consider the poem's title. Preludes. 
A prelude is a short musical composition played before the main piece. This raises some interesting questions. What's coming after the poem preludes? What big thing looms on the horizon? A breakdown or an awakening? Maybe both. Similar musical analogies are seen in his poems Rhapsody on a Windy Night and The Love Song of J. Alfred Prufrock. Stay tuned for our lessons on those masterpieces. Let's dive in. Prelude 1 opens on a winter's evening. T.S. Eliot presents us with a scene in a nameless inner city setting or place. The winter evening settles down with smell of steaks in passageways. Six o'clock. The burnt-out ends of smoky days. And now a gusty shower wraps the grimy scraps of withered leaves about your feet and newspapers from vacant lots. The showers beat on broken blinds and chimney pots. And at the corner of the street, a lonely cab horse steams and stamps and then the lighting of the lamps. Do you notice how the first two lines create a cosy sensation of a sleepy winter's evening? There's a sense of relaxation in the winter evening settles down with smell of steaks in passageways. The seasonal imagery, or words that help us imagine a certain time of year, invites us to imagine the comfort of winter evenings by the fire. The olfactory imagery, or words that help us imagine the smell of steaks, conjures images of home-cooked meals and nourishment. The iambic tetrameter of those two lines is also designed to lull us into a false sense of security with its gently rocking rhythm. Iambic tetrameter is the rhythmic pattern of eight syllables, four unstressed and four stressed. The winter evening settles down. It's almost hypnotic, isn't it? But don't get too comfy. T.S. Eliot disrupts the metre or rhythm with the truncated or shortened sentence, six o'clock. This is an abrupt end-stopped line, meaning he's put a full stop at the end of the line. This line disturbs the metre just as clocks intrude on the natural rhythms and cycles of life. T.S. Eliot often subverts or undermines any romantic or dreamy notions we might develop at the beginning of his poems. Get used to being bumped out of your comfort zone. The speaker, or the voice in the poem, describes the burnt-out ends of smoky days. T.S. Eliot uses a metaphor to compare the evenings with used cigarette butts, as though the days are just consumed and forgotten in this city. A metaphor is a type of comparison where one thing is described as being something else. If cigarette butts are such useless trash, what is T.S. Eliot saying about the way we treat time? Are we making the most of our time in this modern world, or do we just try to get through day after day, wishing our lives away? Oh no, look out for your new shoes! And now a gusty shower wraps the grimy scraps of withered leaves about your feet and newspapers from vacant lots. Ew, gross! The wind and rain have created a whirlpool of garbage at your feet. The rhyming of wraps and scraps connects the two images, as though the weather is deliberately wrapping you in the scraps of dead leaves and soggy old newspapers. What a dump! The visual imagery, or words that help us see a mental picture, of the vacant lots also implies emptiness and neglect. This polluted, derelict environment hardly seems fit for humans. You'd better take cover because the showers beat on broken blinds and chimney pots, and at the corner of the street, 
a lonely cab horse steams and stamps. The alliteration or repetition of the b sound in beat on broken blinds mimics the sound of droplets hammering on rooftops. What a racket! And then you spy that lonely cab horse as she steams and stamps in frustration. Poor thing stuck out in the rain by herself. Here, the cab horse is a useful symbol or representation of the modern city dweller. She symbolises how people are treated in big economies. They are reduced to neglected beasts of burden, trapped in drudgery and abandoned when things get tough. Notice the enjambment from and now a gusty shower wraps down to steams and stamps. Enjambment occurs when a phrase or sentence is spread across two or more lines. Here, T.S. Eliot has spread this sentence across eight lines. This builds the momentum of the cascading images of grime, emptiness and neglect. If we're surrounded by such squalor, how does that affect our souls? Is there hope for us? The final line of Prelude 1 stands alone, separated from the rest of the first stanza or verse, and then the lighting of the lamps. Light is usually a symbol of hope or enlightenment, meaning it represents these ideas. Could this signal a change of mood or emotion? Could T.S. Eliot be bringing some light in to this dismal scene? Well, a clue is in the polysyndeton, or repetition of the word and, in and at the corner of the street, and then the lighting of the lamps. This hints at dreary, mind-numbing routine, and this happens, and then this happens. No wonder the cab horse is stamping impatiently, Maybe morning will bring new hope. Stay tuned for our lesson on Prelude 2 to find out. We hope you enjoyed this Schooling Online production. For more easy lessons, check out our other videos.